that, yeah, that of course. Um, but so I appreciate everybody coming on a Friday. Um, my name is Erwin Busey. Um, I've been in the real estate business for uh, close to 35 years, uh, sp specializing specifically on retail. So we build shopping centers primarily with grocery anchor uh, tenants. Uh, all the um, Ralphs, Albertsons, Trader Joe's, Sprouts, uh, Stater Brothers, those are all tenants that we do a lot of business with. So what I wanted to spend time today is really just kind of give you background on, on, on what I do and, and really give you some, some uh, tips for making sure that you maximize consistent and reliable income. Okay, those are key words, consistent and reliable income. Okay, who's looking for consistent and reliable income besides you? I'm the developer, I want consistent and reliable income, but who else? Lenders, okay. The lender wants consistent and reliable income because they're giving you a mortgage, right? If that income goes down, you, the developer, have a problem. Your equity investors, okay? You have investors that co-invest on projects with you. So making sure that you get consistent, reliable income is key to the puzzle, okay? So who would rather have a lease with me, Erwin Busey, as the tenant, or Walmart? What do you want? What do you think's better? Walmart. Walmart, no brainer, right? publicly traded, great company, investment grade credit. Well, with that type of signature, right, you can get some really good debt, okay? Because in order to put these transactions together, you need debt, okay? You need equity and debt. And lenders like investment grade credit. Um, to give you a little background on me uh, and how I got into real estate, I was an un, 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 undeclared, uh, undecided major. I was going undergrad at SC, and uh, I was working at the Bank of America in Manhattan Beach. This guy walks in wearing shorts, T-shirts, and flip-flops, starts depositing money. I look at him, I go, what do you do? Because I own real estate. I'm like, okay, that's my major. That's what I'm doing. And that is, that's how I got into it. It's, it's, it's a great business. It's a people business. If you like people, it's absolutely awesome. If you like solving problems and solving issues, it's great. If you're looking for quick satisfaction, it's not the business, okay? Uh, I've worked on deals uh, for, yeah, I got one deal that we still own since 2014, and I'll, I'll, I'll walk through that deal with you, but things, things take time, and there's a lot of planning. There's a lot of different people that you need to, uh, um, in other words, satisfy. My daughter asked me, she goes, what's your job? I go, my job is to make everybody happy. The community, the tenant, the lenders, the equity investors, and by the way, someone else, me, right? Which is important, okay? Um, real estate plays such an important role in uh, social interaction in terms of just human beings in general. You're in real estate now, you're going home to real estate, you'll probably go out to dinner to real estate, uh, you'll go to the doctor's office in real estate. There, so it touches everything. What's the key thing that I love about real estate? And it has to do with economics, supply and demand. What does it appreciates? Appreciates, and appreciates quite well, right? And they're not making more lanes. They are not making more links, okay, at all, okay? So you've got limited supply, and what else is happening with our population? It's going up, okay? All this housing that's coming is because we need more housing for people. Well, you again have limited supply. So it's a great, it, it, it's got like an advantage over other investments because there's limited supply, okay? You can make more widgets. Real estate, they're not making more land. Okay. So every time I look at a piece of real estate, I'm looking at the land. What's the strengths? What's the weaknesses? Uh, is there a lot of land in the area? Can somebody 
can a competitor build? What is it? Is there too much retail uh, in the trade area? Okay. Why, why do I care if there's too much? Just think of Friday. What's happening with Friday? They're going bankrupt. Okay. And they've got some good locations. They got some bad ones. Right. You're an owner. Hopefully you own the good location. Right. The other key thing is replaceable rents. You want replaceable rents. Okay. What do I mean by that? Let's say I, I own that right egg and the rent's $15 a foot and the market is $27 a foot. Okay. That's a good thing. If they go bankrupt, it's a great thing for you. You're actually going to make a lot of money. Okay. If you own the right egg at, and they're paying $27 a foot, and the market's $15 a foot, you're going to lose a lot. Okay? So rent plays an important component. Now, retail is such, such a great asset because tenants pay for property taxes, insurance, common area maintenance. Okay? So they, may, they reimburse those costs, not like an office where it's modified gross. You get exposure in terms of expenses. If insurance goes up, the tenant pays. Okay. If taxes go up, tenant pays in most instances. We'll go through that. So that allows you to, to preserve your, your net operating income. And value is determined on net operating income. So, you know, I was thinking about this, this presentation. And one of the things that, that you know, I always look at is how do I grow net operating income? Okay. How do I have consistent net operating income? And the reason for that is, and, and growth. Okay. I don't want a flat lease. Walgreens signed uh, a bunch of leases for uh, 85 years of control at flat rent. Okay. What happens when inflation is eight to 10%? Your asset is devalued. Okay. So you need you need income. Um, your my role is really to mitigate risk. Okay, mitigate as much risk as I possibly can. And there's a push pull. The push is the tenant wants to give you all the risk, right? I want to give the tenant all the risk, right? Um, so how I got here. I got my MBA from uh, LMU in 1994. Um, I started out in real estate as a runner. I essentially helped brokers deliver leases, pick up leases, go take um, um, photographs of properties, go tour properties, meet with cities, all those different things. Um, I, had, I then went to work for a uh, small developer. It was um, five people in, in, in the shop. And he owned a lot of real estate. And it was absolutely great. Okay, because I managed the property, and that meant collecting rent from tenants. That meant dealing with roof leaks. That meant um, um, leasing. That meant working on construction projects to accommodate the tenants. And all, so I got exposure to a lot of different things loan packages, um, financials, all that. I then went to work for a publicly traded REIT, um, and that was Regency Centers. I was there for 11 years, and that was fantastic as well. Um, it allowed me to really create some great relationships with some of our customers who are on the next page, like Target, Sprouts, Whole Foods, et cetera. Um, so this, this is this is the president of the Chamber of Commerce. And she's helping me in a project to get I I have color. Um, so uh, work for Regency, went to LMU. Uh, I then uh, started my own company about 15 years ago. And some of the projects that we worked on. The runway project right down here with Whole Foods and CBS, we worked on that. We own the Target at uh, on Sepulveda, right across from Ralph's. So that was an office depot. 
Okay. We bought that and Office Depot signed 15 year leases. Okay. Old leases are good. Why are old leases good? They're about to expire. They're about to expire. And what else? You can raise the rent. You can raise the rent. Okay. Raising the rent is a big thing. Okay. So if you can take off Depot was paying $15 a foot, and let's say you can release that at $30 a foot, you're doubling the value right there. Plus, you're increasing the credit quality, right? Target has much better credit than Office Depot, right? Again, creating you know uh, um, long-term value there. So these are some of the retailer relationships, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Smart Final, Viarta, Superior, Aldi, Walmart, Safeway, uh, Big Box, do a lot of work with Target, uh, do work with Kohl's, Ross. Ross is super difficult. They're very, very tough. Um, they have a provision called co-tenancy, which we'll get into. You don't want co-tenancy. It's scary. Go ahead. Do you mainly work in the west coast or do you work like west coast east coast because i know safeway doesn't really do a whole lot of stuff out here they're more east coast so yeah i mean so we're focused 100 on california okay. and i got uh and the state of uh of washington and arizona however we have not done any deals uh one of our equity partners is calpers it's the california mm -hmm. public employee retirement system we did uh, five funds with them, value add investments. So we buy buy shopping centers and we reposition those shopping centers and then sell them. It was an IRR driven model, and everybody knows what IRR. What's a key component on IRR? It's time, right? The quicker you can turn those deals, the quicker the promote is, and the quicker you get paid. Okay, if you got a, a project uh, that's IRR driven with your equity partner and it takes ten years. Guess what? That's you don't want that project. You want to be able to round trip those deals quickly. Um, now we just signed a uh, JV agreement, Lincoln Property Company, and um, um, this is another lesson in relationships. Uh, Canyon, the head, chief investment officer for Canyon, left Canyon, went to work for Lincoln. She calls us and says, "Let's get the band back together because we want to start." Here buying more retail with your team. So we just signed that. There's an equity raise that's going out. Um, what that allows us to do is look at multiple sites because Lincoln does office, industrial, medical. So if I've got a site with a residential component and a retail component, I'm a lot more competitive, right? Because I got somebody that, that I can team up with in JV. Does that make sense? But Took a long time to get that those those relationships. So what's going on in 2023? We're a debt concentrator. Go ahead. Oh, I don't know that much, but in general, it's like interest rates are extremely high. Interest rates are brutal. Right. It's it's like for me, it's it's brutal. Okay. We uh we did uh two Starbucks freestanding in front of Home Depot. We bought them from Home Depot the land. Uh, we did 10-year leases with Starbucks, and rates went up, you know, essentially doubled during our whole period. Well, the profit on the back end was cut, big cut, right? So interest rates have a direct impact on value, okay? Because a lot of owners, a lot of owners, they rely on debt. There's not a lot of all-cash buyers. The 1031 market right now, there's... There's not a lot of buyers. Not, not a lot of buyers. No. We just sold at Dutch Brothers uh, in Rialto, California. And that was like a 477 cap. And honestly, I'm happy about it. Um, the Starbucks deals, which is interesting. The Starbucks deals were at a 505 cap. Why do you think that was? Why do you think Starbucks, which has better financials than Dutch Brothers, why was their cap rate higher and it all folds into what i'm going to talk about dutch brothers building burns down you get your rent okay starbucks you're responsible for roof and structure dutch brothers no rent of starbucks here rent of dutch brothers here when you have lower rent or the bigger buyer pool 
Okay, bigger buyer pool means more competition, which means that drives down rates. So interest rates are affecting construction. No new construction remaining cost prohibitive. Retail developers, what we're doing is we're buying existing shopping centers and retenanting boxes and putting in new uh, grocers. Grocery, because of COVID, I mean, uh, one of our friends has had real estate for Kroger and we called him during COVID and we said, how's it going? He's like, every day is Christmas, right? Why was that? Why? Because people were, were really scared. They were going to the market and instead of buying $30 worth of groceries, they were buying like $150 worth of groceries. So those sales have been up big time. And what do you think the grocers did too with margins? They increased the margins. They're like, you know what? You want some milk? It's going to be, it's going to be a lot more, right? So their profitability went 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 big. There's been um, there's markets where there's tertiary markets. If you look at like Utah and and Idaho and certain markets where there's been a lot of net migration out of California to those markets, well, those are now growth markets. Texas, big growth market. Florida, big growth market. Um, so again, lack of supply. What does a lack of supply mean? Higher demand. Higher demand, which means higher prices. And what do I like? Higher rent. Okay. I like I like to grow rent, right? When there's a scarcity of product, I got the ability to charge higher rents. Okay. The negative is I get impacted by interest rates. And I get impacted by construction costs. I just got a bid on a building to uh, deliver a gray shell to a tenant, which is basically roof, HVAC, interior gutted, and utilities. Two hundred dollars a foot. Okay. I used to build buildings ground up, one hundred fifty dollars a foot. Okay. So costs are costs are costs are crazy. Right? To get switch gear. Okay. 12 to 18 months to get switch good. Okay. So if you're trying to build a store, guess what? You got to order that way in advance. Uh, focus on markets with infrastructure capital, sporting venues, uh, cities less uh, vulnerable to climate change. Arizona's running out of water. That's going to impact growth. There. That impacts growth. Guess what? That's that's going to have an impact on rents, right? Uh, Essential sales up while discretionary sales down. You look at Target and Walmart, essential sales, stuff people need and absolutely need to have, that's Walmart. Target is more discretionary, like hey, clothing, different things like that. Target sales have been down, they've been hit. What's the other thing that's going on, right? Flash mobs, like at Target, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Like at Target, I know my mom's a store director for the one on, in the mall. Oh, nice. and they locked up everything. Yeah. So that's making sales go down because people, they don't, it's inconvenient for them to go ask an associate to open it. And there's also not enough staff. Oh yeah. And and there's there's they're locking it up because that yeah, they're yeah, right. And by the way, Target's one of my favorite companies. They're, 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 they they are there, there's a lot of tenants that you're like, I love working with, and Target is wonderful because they're they are they are just absolutely they're just good people. They're they're really good, they're great to work with. Um, they're a great retailer, um, and it's, it's just, I, they make me a better deal maker, okay? And, and why I say that, I, I did a Target podium store in Brea, California. Anybody would know what a podium store is? You park underneath the sales floor, okay? It's a very high building. Then you got vertical transportation coming up. Redondo Beach, the Target there, that's, that's a podium store, park underneath. It's super expensive to build. I got the opportunity to fly back to Minneapolis and meet with the unique store design team to design that, that property. To me, that was like meeting the present. Okay. It really was. It was just like, oh my God. You know, I, I get to meet with like the best in the business to, to work on a site. And you know, I I I I had my concept, which I brought in, and they're like, we think <laughs> we think we should do this. I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely right. Right, the amount of experience that they have, with the amount of stores that they have nationwide, there's tons of experience. 
but theft, okay, it used to be sales drive rents, okay? Big sales, well, guess what? You're gonna get big rent. Now it's happening because of theft, that's impacting bottom line. Okay, that bottom line is shrinking, which means they're gonna be able to pay less rent. We were looking at a grocery store in San Francisco. It was doing 56 million in sales. Guess how much profit they were making on? $500,000, okay? And that was primarily due to theft. Uh, shoppers are pickier and they're spending more time in brick and mortar. I mean, go to restaurants now, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's so, it's so busy. People, people are out and about spending money. Construction costs expected to rise by 25%. Um, you know, we do pro formas. Okay, pro forma is basically, okay, what are the costs? What's the income? What's the return? NLI divided by cost. Okay. You want that return to be 200 basis points to 250 basis points. So that's 2% or 2.5% higher than your exit cap. Okay. So let's say I worked on a project a year ago. You think I got my exit cap wrong? Yes. Okay. These interest rates have gone up significantly. It's 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 tough. Um, buy online, pick up in store. Seven times more volume in sales retailers that offer this. Six out of seven dollars is spent on physical retail. Okay, that's that's big. Okay, Amazon, as you know. They entered the grocery space. They've slowed down in the grocery space. Um, Target, great retailer that figured out you got to have brick and mortar, you got to have distribution, and you got to have online. And if you capture that customer, if you keep that customer, right, long term, you're going to win. It's kind of like the Disneyland model, right? Get the family, you're going to get the kids eventually, right? And the kids, as the kids grow up. That impacts uh, value and cap rates. Expect cap rates to go up. Best in class tenants, all right? So how do I choose to pick with? What tenants do I work with? Do I work with Irwin's grocery stores? No, no, no capital, okay? No, 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 no track record. No, nope. go ahead. Like you work with one that's skin in the game. Absolutely. Like you said, Starbucks and Target are the big ones. Yep. And, and you know, another great tenant is Trader Joe's. Okay. Trader Joe's is an amazing tenant. And you know why? They're like, when you, when you talk to them, their first comment is, we want to pay low rent. Okay. But we'll do most of the improvements. Okay. okay so that's Trader Joe's. Burlington Coat Factory. Burlington Coat Factory basically says, build me my store and I'll pay you higher rent. Which one scares me more? Burlington Coat, okay? Um, I rather I rather own Trader Joe's all day long. The average volume of Trader Joe's is $3,000 a foot, okay? So 10,000 feet, that's $30 million, okay? There's fifty six million dollars, or there's fifty six thousand square foot grocery stores that only do twenty million sales. Okay, Trader Joe's, and think about the margins. Always think about like the margins. The margins on Trader Joe's, right? They got their own brand. They don't have craft, right? They're not paying craft for their brand. They're creating their own brand, which means they can adjust their margins. Uh, Look at existing stores. So I'm looking for credit. I'm looking for balance sheet. And I'm looking for tenants that are actually fun to work with. Okay. And that may sound like that's wrong, but it's 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 not. I, I The way I look at what I do, and, and really my job is to identify land, entitle land, lease to that tenant. Okay. Build the project, get them open, and then move on to the next deal. Okay. But the way I look at life is we're in it together. Okay. Starbucks and I are working on this project. We got to be joined at the hip. These things are very difficult to do. Anybody know what CEQA is? <laughs> I told California Environmental Quality Act. Okay. 
And that means any project that you propose, you need to mitigate traffic, okay? Uh, what you may need to, to mitigate, you may need to do offsites, you may need to add solar, you, you may you have air quality impacts. How many choices does the retailer have to penetrate the market? More choices, lower rent, okay? But where I choose to operate in is high barrier to entry markets with limited supply of retail, okay? Because I don't wanna be in, in North Las Vegas where the retail per capita is five times the national average is what happens when those retailers, something happens like them. Guess what? That rent is going down, okay? I want markets that are difficult to entitle and if they leave, that rent's going up. Okay, that's the key. Uh, going to work versus going home, sales volume forecast, sales drives rents, profit drives rents, retail synergy, and all these things we're, we're just kind of going through. But um, the target used to talk about retail critical mass. What's the critical mass at the intersection? What's the critical mass within a one month? within a two month. What's the drawing power of that intersection, right? And just take, look at Spolgan Boulevard, right? You got you got two CBSs, both do really well, okay? You got Trader Joe's, you absolutely crushes it, okay? Uh, you got the Ralph's, that's a bomber store for them, right? So that's, that's near the airport. You think land near the airport's cheap? No, expensive. Um, who else is in the trade area? So I've taught at uh, SC as a guest speaker in their Emerson program. And the first time I taught there, they basically handed me the spreadsheet. They said, okay, this is how we figure out what retailers need to be there. Okay. I'm looking at the spreadsheet. I, I like math, okay, but I don't like math that much. Okay. And, and you know, it's like, okay, well, the population is this and, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I go, I don't do that. And they go, what do you mean you don't do that? I go, I don't do that. Well, how do you figure it out? I look on Google. Okay. Pretty simple. Yeah. Pretty simple. If Target's there, if Kohl's isn't, well, Kohl's would probably want to be there. Uh, if, if Sprouts is there, it's Trader Joe's. It's Whole Foods, right? It's, it's pretty simple. And you got to figure out the sales impact because the spacing between stores, okay? So when you're negotiating leases, you need to have this information in your mind, right? Okay, why is it important? Because if I know this is the only site within five miles that they can go to, there's no other options, what do you have? There's a great word, leverage, right? You want leverage, okay? Um, and, you know, if they've got five choices, guess what? The leverage is on the, on the other shoe. So when you're when you're negotiating leases, you need to know the market. You need to know the competitive set. You need to know if they say, well, we're going to go across the street. Go, well, that's fine. But the triple nets are way higher. Okay, We own a site directly across the street from a mall. We got surface parking. They got structured parking. Their cam costs are you know, $30 a foot. Ours, ours are half that. Okay, cam costs are just just expenses. Okay, if I got half the expenses, what does that mean? I should be able to get more rent, base rent, NOI, which is what what the cap rate is uh, value. Building to the market, not the site. Um, you know, especially in this environment. I mean, I'm looking at a site right now, and it's uh, it's ten acres. I got a solution for six, okay? Not 10. I'm not gonna buy 10. Don't buy 10. Don't buy 10. Option the four, do the six, option the four, okay? Why don't you wanna buy it? What's, what's, what's carry cost? You gotta pay your debt service on it. You gotta insure it. You gotta pay property taxes on it. If it takes, you know, 10 years, oh my God, it's brutal, right? So buy the correct amount of uh, land. Demographics, 
So Regency, when I worked for Regency, they were very specific about the trade areas and grocers they work work with. Okay. They would only work with publicly traded grocers primarily. And um in trade areas that had X amount of population and et cetera, all the stuff. I heard that Trader Joe's doesn't get built within like communities that don't have an average household income of 85,000 or below. It's usually above, is that true? It's changing. Okay. It's changing. They are they are um, looking at a lot of different opportunities right now because honestly, they're 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 just they're just a great retailer. Mm -hmm. And and people, people. People want to uh, want to go there. Okay. Um, so Paragon, what's the difference between Regency and Paragon? Okay. I'll do a deal anywhere that pencils and that can make money. Okay. And that means, you know, um, um, San Bernardino, Rialto, uh, 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 the desert. Okay. If I've got if I've got the credit, okay. Credit is key. I'm not going to go there to build Irwin supermarket, right? But if I've got Kroger, or if I got Sprouts, or I got somebody with 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 great credit, guess what? I'm going to do something there, right? So we follow the market. We'll do anything from an acre all the way up to you know sixty million dollars. Um, does it work in reverse, for example, for Joe's and Steve with six acres, the main times that's like available with five acres? Are you trying to make that work, or do you just know how that you pass on that? Well, if I've got Trader Joe's, I, I, I got to figure out how to structure it so I can I can accommodate Trader Joe's. And then it, you're not going to take down 25 acres of Trader Joe's. But I mean, if you go into a city, and you say, I have uh, Trader Joe's, and they want to locate in your city. Um, the door's open. Like, what can we do to help you? Okay. Retail, what's great about retail is, what does it generate? Besides jobs. Every time you go buy something, what do you have to pay? Sales tax, right? They love sales tax. Cities love sales tax. I hate yeah. sales tax. <laughs> well, well, you hate sales tax, but sales tax pays for police, it pays for fire, it pays for their general fund. Okay. So they actually there's there's benefits. Okay. Just think like Costco, the three hundred million dollar Costco, how much sales tax that generates in the city? Oh my god, that's a whole world. Okay. That's that's a home run. So you need to know that too, right? Are you going to be, is the city going to support your use? Okay. Entitlements, how do you structure your lease so you, you, you get all the risk negotiated? Our typical, our typical deal, so let's say this is a piece of dirt I want to buy because I want to put trader jails there. Okay. I'll make an offer and I'll say, okay, I need a 90-day due diligence period, plus I need extensions for entitlements. Okay. Within the first 90 days, I approve, I, I approve title. I do a phase one. Who knows what a phase one is? Nope. It's an environmental report to make sure that there's no environmental contamination on the property. Isn't that like when the soil samples are done and all that kind of stuff? Exactly. Exactly. And and it's it's believe me, we've we've had phase, so I I did this project. And we had a phase one, it was clean, which basically said there was no environmental issues. The company that did it for us was huge, huge company. We put a deposit up, non-refundable, non-refundable. Tenant does their own inspection. And they go, hey, uh, we found something which we think might be an issue. I'm like, what? Right? After I put money out, right? I'm like, what, what are you talking about, right? There's no way my company's wrong. And they go, yeah, you know, we think we think they're wrong. We think there's a uh, there's a metal object. Okay, you know what a metal object is? We we defined it as an unknown metal object, underground storage tank. Not fun, scary. Okay, no sleep. Okay, no sleep. Luckily. We got we got super lucky, but 
There's no contamination we ever pull. Okay. Um, so it's you know it's 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 all over the board, but you want to make sure that the tenant waives as many contingencies up front so that when you're processing entitlements, including entitlements. Tenants can approve all the conditions. Can I operate for 24 hours? Can I sell alcohol? Is there limits on um, alcohol sales? Okay. Is there any conditions that I have to comply with in order to operate the business? Okay. This was a CBS in East LA. And uh, LA County, county supervisor goes, look, I don't think we're going to be able to support alcohol sales here. Okay. So what do you think I did? <clears throat> think I gave up? No, never give up. Never give up. Write that one down. Never give up. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's an important skill set in real estate. Never give up. So I went to CVS and I said, tell you what. Okay. I said my rent would be here if you had alcohol. And if you don't, it'll be here. I'll take a discount. I'll share in the risk with you. Okay. They said, fine. Guess what? What did we get? We got the auto license. Thank God, right? So that that so think about creative ways to share risk, mitigate risk. So after, and then the conditions of approval, and I'm going through this right now. Okay. The tenant wants uh, operating hours between 4 a.m. to 11 p.m. at night. You know, it's fine, except there's residential close by. Yeah. And this is a ground lease. So a ground lease, they build the entire building. It's a huge investment by the tenant. I actually like it. Okay. I'm a developer. I hate building things. I don't like building things. I like ground lease. Okay. I like shifting the risk to the tenant and they build it. Okay. All this fancy stuff I want to build, like all this stuff. I hate it. I don't want to build anything. I just want my rent. You can build it all, and I'll give you a cheaper deal. Why would I give them a cheaper deal if they're building? They're carrying the costs if something breaks, if something doesn't go according to plan, if the construction takes longer, and so it's, it's all tied to risks, right? So that return that you're trying to generate, if there's more risk, you need a higher return. Period. End of story. Okay. And they're going to tell you, ah, like my favorite thing is when you talk to the tenant and they say, we want you to build a building. And I'm like, okay, well, how much does it cost? And they're like, oh, we don't know. You know, you, you need to talk to some contractors, right? Well, we don't know. It should be around this, right? It's, it's usually 150% of that. Okay. And the risk is a lot more. Okay. So building a building is actually easier than building the site. Okay, the site you got to bring in the utilities. Do I have to go, you know, mile down the road to to get a, you know, run an electrical line to upgrade the power? Right, it's expensive. Okay, do I have to do offsite improvements in the street? That's expensive. You ever drive by and you see the guys with the stop stop sign just sitting there going, stop, mm -hmm. go? They make a lot of money. Okay, a lot of money. Okay, so you got to figure out how you transfer that risk. And sometimes you can go to the, the cities and say, hey, this isn't my company. I didn't cause this. You, you just want this road improved. You do the work, right? And they're going to go, no, we have no money. and We, we need you to do the work. And it's, it's, it's kind of a negotiation, right? So I, I had to do a signal on the Brea, Brea uh, target project. And the signal was at... Um, directly across from City Hall, okay? And they wanted to signal there. So we had to do a, a whole new signal. That's expensive, okay? When we're going down the line and my, my budget was out of whack. It was just, it was out of whack. I needed some help. I went to the city and I said, signal, I need your help on it. And they go, well, it's conditional approval. You need to do it. And I go, well, my honest opinion is this signal, signal benefits you, City Hall, because it makes it easier to get into City Hall. So I should pay my fair share. I shouldn't pay the whole. 
the whole you know cost. So all these conditions of approval, so you'll be issued conditions of approval. This that's for another class, but there's typically like 30 conditions. Okay. You got to go through each of those conditions line by line. You got to make sure before you close on that land that the tenant approves those conditions. Okay. That they basically say, we're fine, we waive that contingency, and we're going forward. All we need is our building permit. Okay. Because so I want a non contingent lease prior to closing. Why do I want a non contingent lease prior to closing? I don't want to buy a car that I can't drive. Okay. It's a metaphor, but bottom line is I'm doing that deal to accommodate that tenant. If they leave, guess what? I don't want to buy the land. They need to be hip to hip on on transitional area, um, density, competition, um, unemployment area. Okay, if it's a long term hold. We'll do lower returns. Okay, if we're gonna flip it. Guess what? We're gonna want a higher return, right? Because bottom line, long. And if you look at all the really wealthy people in real estate, they rarely sell. Rarely, rarely sell. Why? Taxes. What's that big thing I mentioned earlier? Supply. There's no supply. All right. So those properties are going up in value. So right A, right A just filed. I was going through the list of like stores that are going to reject their leases. And a friend of mine bought a Rite Aid and uh, it's a great location. Yeah, great location. They're rejecting that lease. That lease is going bye-bye. It's a home run for him. He's, he, he's, going, he's going to double the rent, right? So if you can own your real estate, try to keep it. Now, do you want to own all the real estate? No. Like we have like, we have a build and sell program. And then we use that to exchange into long-term holds, all right? And better traders, right? Stuff we want to own long-term. Okay, entitlements, right? This, this is an art in itself. Next, uh, next semester, we need to have an entitlements class about CEQA, because it is, it is, you got to do traffic, noise studies. You got to do um, um, air quality studies. You got to do circulation studies. You got to do uh, greenhouse gas studies. You got to do all these different studies. Well, guess what? You think I do those studies? No, nah. I got I got to hire consultants. And actually, I prefer it that way. Okay, like I was on the phone today um, with a with a, uh, a community member, and she's like, "I don't believe these traffic numbers." And I go, "Listen, I'm I'm just a I'm just a developer." Okay, I hire a licensed traffic engineer who has to submit a traffic study to the city. The city has her own traffic department review that and approve that and comment that. Comment on that. If they don't approve it, you don't have a project. They're the two experts. They need they need a meeting of the minds. It keeps me out of it, right? Because nobody believes me. I'm a dollar, right? Everybody thinks, oh God, you're you're trying to like uh, you know rob Peter to pay Paul, right? No, I'm trying to get a project, right? Conditional use permits, area of over concentration of alcohol licenses. What does that mean? Well, let's go ahead. She's oversaturated with like a bunch of different um, real estate conglomerates that have alcohol in their store. Exactly. Okay. So think of some of these stores. Some of these stores have been there so long they don't have conditions of parole. They can operate 24 hours. They don't have they don't have restrictions on on um, you know singles versus six packs, all these different things. If there's an over concentration, you need the police department to say, guess what? We're okay with this because they're a responsible operator. Okay. All these retailers have a um, uh, alcohol policy so they, they can get initial use permits. It's key. Mitigating neck deck, can the impacts be mitigated? How do you mitigate traffic? Is that signal? Is that is that um, um, adding parking? Is that adding, you know, different things like that, knowing your opponents. Who are your opponents? Okay. 
and figuring out what drives them. So I'm, I'm working on something right now and everybody keeps saying traffic, traffic, traffic. So what I'm doing is I'm getting city traffic engineer, our traffic engineer meet. And, and I already have the signed off approval from there, from the city traffic. I have that in writing. Okay. That's key. Keep everything, keep good records. Okay. Um, importance of relationships with staff and council office. Okay. You want to make sure that you communicate candidly and tell them what you're, what you need, the, the, the benefits of the project. And, you know, honestly, some people are just not going to like your project. There's nothing you can do. I had a project in uh, Ranch Palsbury's and um, so Ranch Palsbury's was here, City of LA was here. We bought property in City of LA. There was a, a storm drain connection that ran through the residential house and there was an easement. There was a, there was a tie in with corrugated metal. Okay. Well, guess what? Some water got in there. That failed, went into the soil. Shopping center subsided. What did the lender do? They took it back and they sued everybody. They sued Caltrans. They sued the city of Ranch Palace Verdes. They sued the city of LA. Okay. They sued, they sued this residential owner where the easement went through the property. Okay. We bought it from the lender. Okay. So we buy it. And they're like, you're buying it from the lender who sued everybody. I'm like, yeah, sorry, but you know, that's 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 where it's at. Um, we got appealed four times on that project by one person because she's like, I am adamant, I am never gonna shop there. Okay. We got the project done. I went into Starbucks. Who's in front of me? She's in front of me. She's getting a cup, cup, cup of coffee. My God. Yeah, I couldn't obsess it, right? I, I just couldn't do this. I'm like, I have my shoulder. I'm like, hey, it's Erwin. How are you? And I thought, wait, I thought you said you would never shop there. And she did. <laughs> so, hey, those, those little little things are, are fun. So, landlord leasing goals. Okay. Maximize NLI to increase the value of the asset. Okay. The value of the income stream. Reliable, consistent income. Okay. You don't want to be responsible for the roof. You don't want to be responsible for the HVAC. You don't want to be responsible for anything. Okay. So write that down. I do not want to be responsible for anything. I want the tenant to be responsible for everything. Okay. That's your starting point. Okay. You're not going to end up there, but you want to you want to do your best to get there. So think about the 85 year old man who just sold uh, a property. He's in a 1031 exchange, okay, and he identifies your property and says, "Okay, um, what are my obligations?" When you say none, it's great. That's what he's looking for. That 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 person does not want any calls about roofs. Does not want calls about HVAC. Does not want calls if the building burns down, are they still paying rent, okay? He wants it to rent, okay? So by, by doing these things, what happens to your buyer? Yes. It's bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's bigger because more people want assets that are management free and headache free, okay? They, so that means you got a bigger buyer pool and you got limited product that are fully triple net assets. You're going to have high demand. Well, if you have high demand, what does that mean? High price. Okay. We sold an in and out on the ground. List. Who likes in and out here? I love it. They're great. How many in and outs do you think are for sale in California uh, per year? Not many. At, at all. I mean, maybe there's like two to three, maybe. Okay. So they're very rare. Okay. Iconic brand, great company, no debt, great balance sheet, single tenant. They were they're responsible for everything. Okay. Lots of demand. Now, take that with a bank where you're responsible for age, and that's a 20 year lease. 20 year lease. With 
growth in the income every five years is about 10%. Uh, anchor tenant lease, primary term, the longer the better. Okay. Why is that important? So think, think, think about your income stream. Okay. Okay. Think, of, think about a shopping center. Where do you think the majority of the income comes from? It's come from the grocery store or the small shops? Okay. Grocery store. Okay. So who likes having a long-term lease besides us? Lender. Lender loves it. Okay. Because typically the biggest thing the lender thinks about is who's going to take out my loan? Okay. After my loan expires, who's going to take it out? And if you got no term left, there's not going to be a lot of people. If you got another 10 years left, there's going to be people. Options. Okay. Anybody know what an option is? Option to buy and sell is everything. Nope. Option to extend the lease. Okay. So remember I told, told you about those Walgreens leases, 85 years, 25 years, and then, you know, another 60 years of control. Who does that benefit? Walgreens doesn't benefit us, right? Options like anchor tenants, I give them what they need. Okay. Provided I get a minimum of 15 years or 20 years or 25 years. Okay. I'll give them, I'll give them the options. They drive the development. Okay. And typically those options are fixed. Okay. So there's 10% increases. With the smaller tenants, you can get fair market value options. Not less than the rent that was previously in effect. Write that down too. Not less than the rent that was previously in effect. Okay. You don't want to negotiate a fair market value option and your rent goes down. Uh, no, that's not fun. Okay. You don't want to, um, I didn't negotiate a fair market value option with Citibank. Okay. And I was thinking, okay, this is great. I'm going to get a higher rent. What do you think Citibank does each and every day? Appraisals and tons of them. Okay. So you got to figure out who, who your, you know, your opponent is. Use. Limit to primary use such as grocery store, the worst case, any lawful retail use, not in violation of exclusives. Okay. So think about this. You think a grocery store anchored center is worth more than a big lots center? 100%. Who does more volume? Grocery store. Who, who has more trips per week? Grocery store. Who's got better credit? Big lots or a grocery store? Grocery store. Okay. So the market is going to pay a lot more for a grocery store than a big one. We bought a center in Fountain Valley. It's a Rite Aid. Uh, it had a big lots, okay? And big lots lease was expiring. We took their rent. Got rid of, they're paying 60 cents a foot per month. $7 a foot annually, okay? They went away. We put sprouts in there, okay? Home run, right? Because... The amount of growth in terms of your income is big. Now, it's not all bells and whistles. It's, it's, it's not all roses, okay? Because there's a lot of costs that you have to put into that space to accommodate sprouts, new roof, new HVAC, um, you know, floor slab, okay? Um, new facade, it gets expensive, okay? But at the end of the day, it's all a matter of math. Recapture right. What's a recapture right? So the grocery store, they have a covenant to open, okay? That opening covenant is one day. After that, they can go dark, okay? Now, if you don't have a recapture, right? Guess what? They can pay the rent, not operate, and keep competition in. And honestly, you're in a world of hurt. Why are you in a world of hurt? You have other shopping centers in your space, and if they're not open, they don't make travel. Exactly. And what do you think a lender looks at at a vacant store? Do you think they give you full value on a vacant store? No way. They're like, it's vacant. Okay. So I got this project in uh, uh, Rancho Mirage. Okay. It's 
It's on Bob Hope and 111. And we have 30,000 square foot bonds. They vacated because they did another deal down the street. We put in Steinmart. Okay. Anybody know who Steinmart is? What happened to Steinmart? It's great. Two letters. Write this down. Bankrupt. Okay. Bankrupt. Okay. We were able to get Amazon in their space, but we had to expand it by 10,000 square feet. Okay. Guess how much that cost? Five million dollars. Okay. So Amazon gets their CFO. They call me and they say, hey, we need your approval on the signage. I said, great. How quickly can I sign? There's my approval on the signage, put the signs up. I'm like, I'm in great shape. They're going to open. We're, you know, lenders can be happy. Equity partners can be happy. It's going to help drive trips to the uh, rest of the center. Guess what? They're still not open. Okay. And if anybody's been reading about them, they just opened a, um, uh, they just did a, a remodel on a couple stores in Chicago. And this yeah. is related for them. Okay. But okay, their obligation to open is 365 days after the rent commencement date. Well, their rent commencement date was March of, of this year. So 365 days is March. After that, I've got to recapture that. Okay. I can go in there and I can say, I'm terminating your lease and I can put somebody else in there. Okay. You want to make sure that you have the ability to do that. Because again, if you don't, it's going to be it's going to be a problem. Having a lease that's financeable and attractive to lenders and equity partners. Okay, a lot of these tenants they'll send you a letter of intent and they'll say, uh, "We need an option to terminate if things don't work out." talking about can i terminate if I, I i think there's better rent out there no how can i give you an option to terminate okay no you gotta you you gotta have a commitment okay you gotta have a commitment and you know having a termination right on sales don't do it okay don't do it sales thresholds don't do it okay it's a risk they gotta admit it that, that I'm taking risk by building the shopping center. They're taking risk by building the store. They're experts in what they do. I'm hopefully a somewhat expert in what I do. They they got to put skin in the game. Period and story. Okay. Consistent rental growth through base rent increases. So you need rental growth. Okay. Um, what's inflation been? Like eight percent. What are the bumps that we typically get from a grocery store? Ten percent. Every five years, that's 2% per year. Okay? It's not good because okay? you're not keeping up with inflation. Um, allow for future site plan changes, changes of use within the shopping center. Okay? Why do I like retail? Who knows what coverage is besides Chris? <laughs> so for every acre, how big is an acre? 43,560, okay? You can build 10,000 square feet for retail, okay? Well, what do you think is going on with all these retail sites in California? What's the biggest issue we're having in California? Housing, okay? So all these cities are rezoning retail centers and saying, this is mixed use. You can build up to 300 units. Oh my God. That's a home run. If, you're, if your land gets rezoned to mixed use, it's a home run. Okay. So the ability to change uses in shopping centers, to change a certain part of the center from retail to residential or to other uses is, is important. Okay. So you can't look at a shopping center and say, this is a shopping center. It's going to be a shopping center for the next 50 years. Don't do that. That is going to evolve and change. Okay. Give them control over their access, their parking. Okay. And a certain portion of the shopping center, 
but I'm like, and I'm, I'm, I'm going through this negotiation right now. I've done it with Safeway, I've done it with Target, I've done it with uh, 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 others, okay? I want the right to build residential in some of the retail, okay? Because if it comes to that, I'm leaving a ton of money on the table if you don't think about that. Minimize operating expenses that are borne by landlord and produce net operating. Okay? Again, I don't want to take care of this. I don't want to take care of HVAC. I don't want to take care of any. Okay? Most of the cost. And frankly, I'll give a cheaper rent deal if they take on those responsibilities. A lot of tenants will say, hey, I will, I'm, we're not doing roof. We're not doing, no, there's no way. You need to maintain roof. I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll buy a new roof, okay? You'll get a 20 year, no dollar limit warranty on it, okay? Which is a warranty on the roof. That's part of my work. But for you to get that new roof, you're responsible for the roof. And a lot of tenants will go for it, they're fine. HVAC, oh my God, don't agree to maintain or repair HVAC. It's the worst, okay? It is absolutely the worst. And what's going on with HVAC now in California? They're changing it from gas to electric, okay? So just think, oh yeah, I got an HVAC, that's great. That that gas, that, uh, gas HVAC unit, that's, I don't know, $2,000 a ton. Electrical, it's probably $3,000 a ton. And you gotta replace that? And then you gotta figure out, okay, well, guess what? There's no elect uh, there's not enough electric uh, electrical capacity to replace that. Then you're in default of the lease, okay? So be very careful. Okay, provide a requirement to upgrade and remodel through the lease term. We own a uh, uh, shopping center in Carson, California. It was built in 1956, okay? It was first a shopper's food warehouse, they got acquired by Lucky Stores. Then, okay, Lucky was operating. Albertsons built a store two miles away. Brand new, 56,000 square feet. Beautiful store, okay? What do you think? What happened next? Albertsons bought Lucky's, okay? So I have this store. They put zero money into it, zero. I mean, for... 25 years, old lights, looks tired, right? Who, who likes going to new grocery stores? Who likes going to clean grocery stores? That's what I want in my shopping center, new and clean. So should you, right? So making sure that they're obligated to remodel, okay? Keeping good, good condition is absolutely key, right? Is if they're there for a long time, and they don't put money in, it's devaluing your asset. Devaluing your asset. You don't want that, okay? Because you're going to be, you're not going to be able to get market rents from tenants because it's an old fire store. Management fees, okay? Can you pass through the management fees? I got, I got to hire a third party property manager. We typically pay them three and a half percent or four percent of gross income. Gross income is rent plus CAM plus taxes plus insurance. Okay. And I always argue with my property manager about this, but I'm like, okay, so let me get this straight. You get a percentage. Let's say I got a hundred thousand square foot center here and the income is $2 million. Okay. And you get three and a half percent, whatever, so, you know, 70,000 bucks, right? Then, then I've got a $4 million. It's the same amount of tenants, yet I pay more. Doesn't make sense, but that's just how the business works. But you want to be able to pass through management fees. Why is that? What does this all boil down to? NOI, net operating income. Okay. If you're not getting re recoveries from tenants, that's reducing your net operating income. Minimize rent abatement, downtime, or tenant termination rights. 
there's this ugly thing called co-tenancy. Anybody know what co-tenancy is? So let's say you have a shopping center with Target, Ross, PetSmart, Michaels. Okay? Ross, PetSmart, and Michaels have these provisions called co-tenancies. And that co-tenancy means if Target and someone else goes dark, we get half rent. Okay, and some some is even worse. Some is I get a percentage of my sales. Okay, and sometimes like there's there's a uh, so Ross Rasperless did a project in uh, you know, Palm Desert, and they had a co-tenancy provision. And that co-tenancy provision named Mervins, not successors in the signs of Mervins, not. Suitable replacement tenants, at least 70,000 square feet. None, none of that. It named Mervins. They were paying alternate rent for like 15 years because Mervins went bankrupt. Okay. So you got to think about these things. Okay. You, and by the way, co tenancies, I hate. I don't like working on centers with co tenancy provisions. Period. End of story. Because they can in, impact your income. Lenders hate them. I hate them. So, okay, tenant leasing goals, right? Reduce rents and reimbursements to landlord. How do they do that? They have caps on expenses. Like we have a lease right now with Hobby Lobby, okay? And they don't, one of their exclusions of operating expenses is security. What do you think security costs have gone up? during the last five years, big time, okay? So that's, so we go to them and we say, hey, uh, uh, and they want to like renew and get more term. And we said, that's great, but we need you to reimburse for security. And they're like, we're not gonna do it, okay? And so we're like, well, we're not gonna give you more options then, right? So it's kind of, you know, a quid pro quo. A lot of times on, on leases, but because tenants hate paying for security. So, but there's language in the lease that basically says, hey, uh, you've got to keep the shopping center in a safe condition. That's an obligation of landlord. Okay. Well, if something happens, they want security. Okay. And so what do you what do you think my middle ground is? How do I solve that? Basically say, tell you what. There's no obligation for me to provide security on your parcel unless you agree to pay for it, okay? If you don't want to pay for it, that's fine, but I'm not obligated, okay? and that's in the lease. That way, if I if, if I do pay for security, they're paying for it too. Again, I don't want to reduce NOI. Shift construction and operating risk to land, okay? So all they want to do is shift risk. So when you're negotiating the lease, the tenant will, will, will tell you, all right, we need a schedule. We promised Wall Street we're opening this store in March of 2025. We need your commitment. You will do that. Great. Okay, well, we'll commit. And my response is, uh, I need a commitment when you're going to open. They go, ah, you know, we can't. We, we, we don't. We. So it's, it's a very one-sided street. Okay. They... They don't want to like approve plans, yet they want you to approve their plans, but they won't approve your plans. Okay. You need to, to get them to approve plans. I did a bed, bath, and beyond in uh, Rancho Santa Fe. Okay. And uh, we're obligated to use their vendors for certain things. We had a trash compactor that we had to deliver to the store. And they had an approved vendor you had to use this, this, this company. So we call up the company. We're like, okay. And you have to give notice to the tenant, like when you're going to deliver, like 60 days prior notice. So you give them notice. We call up the trash compactor guy and say, okay, we've given them notice. We need you here this day. Okay. He goes, no problem. When that day comes, it doesn't show up. Okay. Doesn't show up. Like, where are you? you know, we need this done by this day. Where are you? He said, ah, you know, I got some other job. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll come here. So guess what happens? Bed, bath, and beyond. They have a 60-day build-out period. They open in 45 days. 
They hit us with liquidated damages because there's a delay in possession because the tender obligations, delivery conditions, included that trash compactor, which was their guy, which honestly, I think was just part of the whole game. Penalize landlord for late delivery, okay? So you give them notice, if you fail, then they're gonna say, okay, we get a remedy of um, X dollars per day or rent, uh, um, base rent abatement, okay? I, I have one tenant that said, if you're, if you're late one day, I get five days for every day you're late. I'm like five days, how is that fair, right? It's not, okay? Typically it's one for one and for the first 30 days and two for one thereafter. Any questions? Am I going too fast? Is this, you learn it? Okay. Absolute control of site plan changes and shopping changes, right? So like an anchor tenant will say, here's my site plan, I control the, the entire site plan, okay? Any changes requires our consent at our sole and absolute discretion. Okay, write this down. Sole and absolute, bad words. Okay, reasonable, good words. Okay. Um, site plan changes, again, you want to give them a zone of control, which is their parking, their access, everything outside of that, you want to be able to do so. Use rights. They want the right to do anything there, any lawful use, okay? What do you think if they open a bingo card? Did I get it? You don't want that at all, okay? And remember we talked about recapture? If they change their use, you need the right to terminate their use, okay? A percentage rent only. Yeah, that Ross example where they they were paying percentage rent for, for a long, long time. That's not good. Okay. How do you think a lender looks at percentage rent? It's percentage rent reliable. And it, it, anybody know what percentage rent is? Tied to sales. Okay. It's a rent that's tied to sales. Their sales goes down, your rent goes down. Competition goes it comes into the trade area, your rent goes down. Okay. You don't want that. You want base rent. Okay. A lot of times you'll look at uh like investment offerings and they're gonna say, okay, well, this tenant pays X amount of percentage rent. Let's cap that. That's non-reliable income. I, I, I there, it's non-reliable. I don't care how much history there is, because if, if competitor moves into the trade area, that's gonna decrease. You don't want to underwrite percentage rent. You want to underwrite the base rent. Okay, this, this one's like, I love this one, right? Limited liability, having the lease signed by a shell corp. What's a shell corp? Is it like, um, it's kind of like, aren't those illegal? Like some shell corps are illegal? There's, yeah, there's there's some that are illegal, but it's basically, a, it's, it's a holding entity with no assets, okay? They don't want the parent on the on on the lease. I want the parent, right? Because my lender wants the parent, right? And tenants that don't give you the the parent guarantee, be careful. Okay, you should get parent guarantee. Write that down too. Get parent guarantee. Okay. None of this shell stuff. None of this. You know. Uh, 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 you know. Uh, uh, yeah, TJ Maxx of, of um, Laverne Inc. Okay, what is that? Mean? Right, that's a single asset entity. You, they default. Guess what? You're not you're not going to be able to collect. Okay, that is huge. Anytime you get a letter of intent, what's the first thing you're going to do? Who is signing the lease? What is their assets? Okay. And then ask him for financials. And I've been on the phone with so many CFOs of companies and they're like, well, you know, it's kind of like a holding corp. We really don't have financials. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, I, I, I need financials. It's just, I have exclusive provisions 
that require tenant's consent for changes or consent to other uses in the center. Okay? What does that mean? Anybody remember Blockbuster video? You guys are, you, you guys are too young. Okay? But so Blockbuster, their, their use clause said technical, technological evolutions of same. Okay? I'm like, I think I'm kind of bright, but what does that mean? Okay? What does that mean? That can mean anything. Okay? Be very careful. You, your use clauses, your, your exclusive provisions, they got to be operating. They don't get exclusives if they're not operating. If they're dark. They don't get the benefit of an exclusive. Okay? They can't be in default. Okay? If they're in default. No. Okay? If they, and if they, grocery stores, if they don't operate for 12 months, exclusive goes away. Right? Exclusives are terrible. There's another thing to write down. Don't give exclusives to mom and pop tenants. Okay? Case in point, we did a deal with uh, Blimpies. Okay? Sandwich chain. Good sandwiches. They weren't doing that well. And they were in a shopping center with Boston Market, Sam's Club, Vons. And they had a exclusive which said they will not sell more than 50%. Nobody else in the center will sell, sell more than 50% sandwiches. And they're like, uh, we think Sam's Club is selling more than 50% sandwiches. They're like, really? And they're like, yeah, really. So they get a pro bono attorney. And what's a pro bono attorney? Free, free attorney. Do you think I have a free attorney? I don't know. Okay, so we had to hire an attorney. We had to basically set somebody out in front of Sam's and uh, count the transactions. But it's a headache. You don't want that. And the only reason they did that is because they were not doing. They wanted to get out of their lease, right? So they're they grasping for straws. Have no obligation to open or operate. We need an obligation to open. Okay. Now. Do you think the court is going to force a tenant to open? No. Okay. So how do you structure the deal so you incentivize the tenant to open? What's always a great remedy for more risk? More rent. Right? So if they fail to open, they got to pay increased rent. At least it's painful. Okay. But the reality is. I don't think a court is going to enforce an opening covenant. You can't you can't have a court go and say you got to open that store because you have an opening covenant. They just say no. Unlimited offset rights for a landlord default. Okay. Let's say that uh, you got a uh, you got a drugstore. You've owned it for twenty years. Their lease is twenty five years. Okay. They basically. Um, we're not doing well. They come to you and say, we need you to replace the roof. And you got roof obligations under the lease. Okay. And you say, I'm not going to, you have five years left. We'll just R and M it. And they go, no, you need to replace that roof. Okay. Otherwise we're offsetting our rents. You know what offsetting our rent means? Reducing your rent. What's the key thing you don't want? Any reductions in NOI. Okay. So offset rights. Don't give them. I mean, and if you do, if you have to, and I get, I give them, I, I give them, but it's to credit tenants, and it's limited to fifty percent of base rent for six months, and after that they have to get a court order to offset. Okay, because I need my income stream. Okay. Okay. So this is just a quick NOI comparison. So assume you enter in at least 500,000 per annum in base rent. Scenario A, lease is triple net, where tenant is responsible for roof, structure, building, common area, capital expenses, and management fees. They're responsible for everything, okay? Scenario B, it's double net. Landlord's responsible for roof and structural and common area. Tenant reimburses for CAM at a cost gap of 50,000, including management fees, actual cost to operate are 75. In addition, tenant will not pay for security costs. So you take 500 grand, 500, 500. You got 25 deduction for CAM leakage. 
You got 10 for uh, security leakage. NOI, 500,000. Divide that by 0.05%, you get a $10 million value, okay? Uh, 465 divided by 5%, you're at 9.3 million. There's $700,000 value that you just gave away for free. Don't do that, okay? Tenants need to pay for operating expenses. I don't, I don't know if there's any tenants in here, but they need to pay for operating expenses, okay? They want the shopping center to look good, they need to pay for it. If the parking lot needs to be repaved or restriped, they need to pay for it, okay? It's not, hey, we need you to do this and uh, it's at your cost. Okay. Like a brand new roof today on a, you know, you're talking $600,000 on a grocery store, okay? Like $10 a foot. No, okay? New, to get the tenant in, sure. I'll, I'll do that and then give them the warranty. But you don't want to lose that value. Okay. So this is a shopping center we own. It's in Carson, California. It's uh, Carson, Maine. So we bought this. Uh, this center was developed in 1956. This is, this, is, this is the exact one where Albertsons did not put a dime into the store. Okay, so what do you see here and here? See one building or two buildings? Look at the roof lines. Two. two. Okay, and that's occupied that entire space by one grocery. Okay, but there's a difference in ceiling height. Okay, that's key. Difference in ceiling height. Then you can see some of the tenants that were in there. This is an old picture, but we had pay less shoes. Anybody remember pay less shoes? Yeah. Okay. What happened to them? Bankruptcy. Okay. What's a common theme in retail? Bankruptcy. Okay. So we were under contract on this to buy this, and pay less shoes sent an amendment to the owner and said, we want you to sign this, which basically says it's a gross lease at $3,000 per month. And we have another 10 years at $3,000 per month, right? So the owner came to us and said, hey, you know, what do you think of this? I'm like, uh, the answer is no, right? We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Then I had, uh, you know, a couple other mom and pop tenants there. What do you notice about that shop space? So the shop space is, is basically between here and here. How deep is it? It's deep, okay? Typical shop space depths, write this down, 65 feet. 60 to 65 feet. This is 125 feet, okay? So, how does 125 foot depths affect your leasing? So think of 120, I mean, a tenant wants a 1200 square foot, or 1250 square foot store. They get 10 feet of frontage. You think anybody can operate in 10 feet of frontage? No, right? So when you're analyzing assets like this, you gotta understand how does that impact your lease, right? So what we did is we took the pay less, we took a couple other shops and we, we did Dollar Tree there, okay? So I took a bankrupt tenant, put Dollar Tree in there, okay? And Dollar Tree is, they're not easy, okay? They got caps on security, caps on this, right? But I took non-credit and replaced it with credit, okay? Reliable income, okay? Uh, we did a dentist deal in here, okay? Guy had five locations. What happened to him? Bankrupt, okay? Who bought him? Western Dental, okay? Reliable income stream. That was a huge upgrade, all right? Uh, bank of America, okay, that's 10,000 square foot bank. How many 10,000 square foot banks are there? Not a lot. 
Should I be scared of that? Yeah, I should be, right? Because they vacate, I gotta, I gotta find a 10,000 square foot user. <clears throat> now, what's the important question to ask? What is the rent they're paying? Because if they're paying a dollar a foot, hey, tell you what, if I lose Bank of America, no big deal. If they're paying $3 a foot, I don't want to lose it, right? Uh, so this center, and we're, we're actually, so what happened was we got the Albertson space back. They had, when we bought this, they had uh, it's like 25 year deal with four or five year options. And they didn't exercise the last option. Thank God. Their rent was flat for the whole time frame. Okay. 25 years for like 40 years, their rent was flat. Okay. Paying nothing. And again, they didn't invest in the space. We were able to get that back and we're putting Viarna supermarkets in there. Okay. And there's an increase in NOI. Okay. What does that mean? I increase NOI, what happens? Basic premise. I increase value, right? If I double the rent, there's a big pop. Um, the other, so this gives you an idea of just the existing site plan. You know, it's parked at 3.3 per thousand, okay? What happened here? Zoning wise, what do you think happened? Zoning overlay, residential allowed, density allowed. Okay, great. So within my deal with Viarta, they control this entire area. Okay, but the shops, if the shops, if I ever get the shops back, I can build red residential and there's nothing they can say about it. Okay. Plan for the future. Okay. The other thing is you're going to see and I'll, I'll you, this, this line here, this line here, there's a line here, and there's a line here. What are those? Okay. What's that? That's a parcel map. Okay, you know what a parcel map is? Yeah, parcel map is basically you get property taxes. Like you get a property tax bill on your on on your house. There's an APN number. See that seven three three five? That's seven three three five zero zero one dash zero two two. Right, part of Albertson's premises, which is now by Arts. Zero two three part part of Albertson's premises. Okay, what's great about that? What can you do? Two things. You send them the tax bill directly, they pay it directly. Okay? That's great. Two, you can sell just the Biarta. You don't have to sell the whole shopping center. There's So there's a lot more uh, exit strategies that you can do. Okay? Same with Bank of America. Same thing. They have their own, their own parcel. So how many buyers do you think there are for the whole shopping center versus individual parts? There's more for individual parts. So anytime you're looking at a retail center, I always pull up the tax bill, uh, the, the parcel map, figure out how many parcels there are. Do I have the ability to sell those off? Okay. And make the tenant responsible for paying the taxes. I don't want to get the tax bill, pay the taxes, then send it to the tenant, and then they reimburse me. And what does that take? Time, right? When I, when I, you get, you always got to look, if I'm fronting money, there's an opportunity cost for that money, right? There's a carry related to that money. Let them pay the carry, not me. I don't want to pay it. Have them pay, right? You guys want to take a short break? Let's take a short break. Does that work? Yeah. Like 10 minutes and then we'll reconvene. Thank 
I mean, no past, but I'll see what we've done, but I have a thought about it yeah. that way. That doesn't yeah. know how to like you just sort of filter on yourself. So it's like you want to put everything in different sheets based on what they want to sort by. So I have to do it. Yeah. I'm 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 saying that technologically challenge. Seems the problem. The point literally is clicking an arrow and being sort of makes. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's on the same actual celebration. I Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is an on game, but even still. Whatever. Okay. You know how you can make a table of this one? Yeah. Well, you know you can like use the editing file if you can sort by or if you don't want to sort by. I'll show you one thing. Yeah, I'm just being right here. I made it to the table there. Any questions? Yeah. I'll start to sort of by the event. Oh, for example, like when we do a future development day, it's going to send it on the show that more I can get the table than I can get. Instead, sort it by date. Yeah. So instead of just like doing this, sort of on the finance side, yeah, I, I, you know, I think like we get great training in a bank, like like bank. So Sam Deep is part of our real estate advisory committee. He's with Bank of America. So he he does a lot of our loans, and you know that's that's a great training ground. Or you can work for a you know we've got we've got an analyst in our, like our our company. You need to learn Argus. Argus is is key to learn. And then there's a bunch of shops that you can work with, um, and that's fin financial modeling. It's loan packages. It's you know the metrics of the deal, return on equity. Um, um, return on cost, IRR, all that stuff, right? And it's 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 and a lot of times what happens is you're going to look at like projects and say, okay, well, wait a second, that doesn't make sense. Why are they showing a you know four cap exit when it should be a five? Or why is the carry right the, the carry component like six months when it should be twelve? How does that impact the returns? So it's it's a great way to learn, and then then the other thing is when you're when you're analyzing these properties, you're going to be going through through leases, oh, I'm sorry. and that's huge. You got, I mean, if 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 really if you want to like leasing, read, read, read leases. So, so I could have bring you earlier. Okay. I seriously was going to bring you a bottle of wine, so next time I see you, I got you. All right, I appreciate it. I have the last one. I got, I got another one. Let's give me a good story. Okay. Are you? Yeah, where? They're November 5th through the 19th. Oh, so cool. Where? Uh, we can leave on that. We can cut it. Oh, you're going to love it. I got to pick the brand new one. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah. give you all of them. Like, Astro and Gaston, Lamar, uh, Red, if you like seafood. Oh, I love seafood. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll email you a couple of things. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'll be out there for my birthday, so I'm going to bring my girlfriend to make some nice. Oh, oh nice. So there's there's yeah. saving much. Yeah, I wasn't going to sign up for the mission of the store. Yeah, I can't wait. We have a, yeah, we have a very nice hotel. We have a double tree, right? And we have clothing. Oh, oh good. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a diamond member with Open. Oh, oh nice. So I'm, I'm looking forward to those upgrades. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Should we do that? Yeah. 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 If you need a yeah. canyon down there, yeah. I got like. And seriously, I got like tons of family down there. If you need anything, just let me know. I'll get you plugged in. Oh, great. It's, 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 it's no issue whatsoever. There, there's a, so Miraflores, there's this Regattas, there's this club there that's really fun too. So there, there, there's, you know, it's like a sports club on the beach. So there's all sorts of things. But yeah, just let me know. I'll get you hooked up. I got it. I guess it's like so great. Yeah, I love my, my mom grew up in the Air Force, so I can still got my hand. I got a bunch of people got some time down there. I hear good things. That's why we bust it. Oh, it's awesome. I, 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 I try to go every year, but it's yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's tough with 
with kids and family. So it's not there, but <laughs> we'll enjoy it. Now, my friend. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, it was, it, was, it was an act of choice. Uh, there you go. All those years teaching, I think it's part of me. No, it's okay. <laughs> I think I've done with enough children for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm gonna be but yeah, uh, thanks for coming out. It was always good to see you. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's good. It's good. We've been open, 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 open. We've been doing good. Um, you know, as always, the uh, mandatory has been a little bit high. Oh yeah. The, oh, the past couple of weeks we had um, uh, we ran. Oh, that's good. It's pretty good. Yeah. No, oh, going yeah. in the right direction. And then we've got the yellow. Uh, so we've been doing like seven or eight more things. Nice. Good. All right. Well, you know, if you ever need anything, you know where to find me. And I really do appreciate the offer for me. I'll I'll yeah. obviously look up, but we send you an email. I appreciate it. I'll get you square away. Well, I'll let you get to it. Awesome. All right, we'll get get started again. Um, so we replaced uh, Albertsons with Viarta. Um, these are the elevations that we got approved by the city. Um, we actually got these administratively approved. Also, uh, so it was a grocery store, and um, we did not need a conditional use permit for the sale of alcohol. Okay. All these things might not seem like important, but the quicker I can get the tenant open, what do I get? Right. Rent. N O I rent. I like rent. I want rent quick. I want. So how do you how do you shave down your construction schedule? I got administrative approval for all the parking lot repair and maintenance and new landscaping. That was administratively approved. Okay. Huge. I saved, I, I saved probably three to four months in time frame on it. Okay. All those things you want to do. Okay. So the shopping center was built in 1956. What do you think one of the biggest risks of that building structure is? Think about earthquakes. Utilities. Well, utilities kind of. Utilities important. Structural issues. Structural issues. Okay, so we had to we had to send in a team of structural engineers to pull all the ceiling tiles, go on the roof, look at all the trusses, whole nine yards, do structural upgrades, because under this lease, I'm responsible for structural. Okay, I don't like being responsible for structural, but I am. HVAC, we paid for it, they're responsible for it. Roof, we paid for it, they're responsible for it. Common area, they self-maintain their common area. Okay, So they maintain their own common area. They want security, they pay for security. Okay? Yeah, I want I want low headaches. Okay, so here, here, here's a typical letter of intent. Okay, this is how the process starts. The process is the tenant says, okay, we'd like to negotiate a lease with you, all right? And here is a letter of intent we're proposing. Pretty easy, PCG, PCG Carson Crossings, we're the owner, That's we have a limited partnership that owns it. The tenant, I took the tenant out, but what's the mo most important thing you wanna do? Who is the tenant? What is their financials? And how bankable are they? Okay. I just talked about Bank of America. Bank of America is our lender, lender on this property. Okay. Guess who one of their clients is? Viarta. They bank Viarta too. That's a good thing. Right. It's a known quantity. Okay. Premises. Describe the premises. It's 56,960 square feet, okay? Per lease outline drawing by an ADEL, okay? A lot of times tenants will have the right to remeasure their space. And sometimes it's open-ended, okay? So it's year four of their term and they remeasure their space and it's less. They come back to you and say, Oh, you owe me a rent credit for four years of mispaid rent, mispaid camp. You don't want that. Okay. You agree to the, to the square footage out front. Okay. On new builds where you're building the box at delivery, 
you give them a, a certificate from an architect that's, that certifies the square footage, okay? Because you don't want to argue about that later. Okay, that square footage thing is important. If I have a thousand more square feet, there's value there. So many buildings are mismeasured. Okay? They are mismeasured. This building for, you know, since 1956, because it was a it was a ground lease where they leased the ground and they built the building. Okay, fifty six thousand feet. When 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 we took it back, we measured it. I got nine hundred sixty more square feet. Okay, every little bit counts. Okay, every little because that's what does that bring? More N O I, more N O I. Okay. Okay, term, 20 years from rank commencement, okay? Tenants shall have two consecutive five-year options to extend the lease in one four-year and 11-month option, okay? Why is there a four-year and 11-month option? Because anything over 35 years, there's a big transfer tax, okay? So if you're 34 years and 11 months, you don't have to pay that transfer tax, okay? So that's, that's the reason. Okay, permitted use, subject to any use restrictions under the CCNRs. Okay, anybody know what the CCNRs are? Covenants, conditions, and restrictions. They are on title, they affect the property. They basically say you can't have a uh, bingo parlor here. Okay, or you can't have a auto salvage yard here. You can't have a marijuana facility here, right? So there's use restrictions. There's cross access restrictions or any existing leases, tenant and several lessees, concessionaires, and licensees shall be entitled to use all or portion of the premises for the pur purpose of operating a full service grocery store with all other related lawful retail uses, including but not limited sale of vitamins, prescription drugs. Okay. Vitamins and prescription drugs. Those two little words. What does that mean? So think about leasing, okay? They want to, the right to operate a pharmacy. Does that impact your ability to do pharmacy? Okay, are they a grocery store or are they a pharmacy? They're a grocery store. I want the right to do a drugstore, okay? So you gotta carve out that right. Alcoholic beverages, beer and wine, Financial services, okay. That, that one, that one's important too. Financial services. Well, I got Bank of America in the shopping center. Okay, that's why we needed that carve out. Any existing tenants, because Bank of America has an exclusive. Under under the old Albertsons lease, Bank of America had the right to operate an ATM within the Albertsons space, but Albertsons cannot lease to another bank in their space. Okay. Okay, tenant may without landlord's consent grant licenses, concessions, licensees for the operation of departments within the store, so long as there's not more than four separate entrances. Okay, anybody been by Lamita and Crenshaw? Now, you know, the Home Depot, you got Vons there. Okay, so Vons, that used to be an old Smith's food and drug, it's 80,000 feet. Okay, so Vons carved out shops and they lease shops in the front. As a landlord, do you want that? No. Why? Because there's more supply. They're competing against your shops. And by the way, their rent is way cheaper than what your rent needs to be to make that work, right? So you want to limit that, okay? Okay, exclusive use. Landlord hereby agrees that it will not sell, market, or otherwise offer for rent or lease in the shopping center or assign to any person, other person or entity or allow to be assigned uh, basically to a grocery store or a 99 cents only. Okay. Why do you think grocers hate like 99 only or Dollar Tree? Because they can't compete with costs, right? And people come in to buy detergent and different things like that. They don't like it. I have an existing dollar tree. 
So they're subject to the Dollar Tree. Okay. Um, Notwithstanding the above, landlords shall have the right to these space coffee shops, the corner bakery, Panera bed, Mexican fast food restaurants, less than 2,500 square feet with or without a drive through a national chain drugstore like CVS or Walgreens or Rite Aid, who will have the right to sell alcohol and sell food, food items and prescription pharmacies. Okay. So drugstores, I did a Trader Joe's CVS deal. Okay. I signed the Trader Joe's lease first. Why did I do that? Because Trader Joe's is a really good tenant and they drive a lot of traffic. And so CBS is getting paid more rent in the area we had Trader Joe's already. Right on. Right there. CBS will pay more after I sign the lease with Trader Joe's. Okay. Trader Joe's had a food exclusive, which basically said we're operating as a grocery store. CBS basically says, hey, we're going to be a pharmacy. We're fine with that, but we need the right to sell food on an incidental basis, okay? Then you get into a whole discussion. What's food? What's food? Is it candy? Is it water? So all these things you have to figure out. But bottom line is I knew CBS was going to come to a solution with Trader Joe's because they wanted to be there because tr having Trader Joe's is such, such an asset. Um. In the event tenant does not operate a grocery store for a period of 12 months, excluding casualty and remodeling. Okay, what's casualty? Like earthquake. Like that. Like, um... So earthquake, fire, building burns down. There's an earthquake. You know, the building is, is damaged. You got to rebuild. Okay. If they're rebuilding or they're remodeling, that doesn't count towards the 12-month period. Okay. Uh, minimum rent, important. Okay. So this is this is like a lot of the value is established here on minimum rent. Okay. You want as high rent, they want low rent. You got to figure out what makes sense. Okay. But as a matter of just pure practice, for me. I don't want to, to have a rent that is unsustainable by the tenant. Okay. I want a rent where they're going to make money. It's important. Okay. This isn't a one sided game where I just want to make, get my rent because if I got too high rent, they're going to go out. If they go out, what happens? What cost do I have? Commissions, TI, downtime. Do I want that? No. Okay. What I love about retail is you put them in and if they're generating great sales, they're not moving. Okay. You got all the leverage. That's what you want. Okay. You don't want them to move. To open up a grocery store at this location, how much do you think it is? Fixtures. You know, they had to raise the ceiling because it was two, two different ceiling heights. Uh, uh, structure, plumbing, new slab. It's like $10 million. Okay. Do I sleep well at night knowing they invested $10 million? Yes. Do I not sleep well if I invested the $10 million and they invested nothing? Yeah, I don't sleep well. Right. You want them to have skin in the game. Okay. So, rent, property taxes, insurance, common area maintenance charge will commence on the earlier. 210 days from the last of the, of the following year occurred. Lease execution, tenants receive applicable billing permits and alcohol beverage permits, and delivery of the premises free and clear of hazmats in, in the condition described in the uh, delivery condition. Uh, landlord shall turn over possession of the premises on a date to be specified in the lease or by written notice to tenant if the date is not specified in the lease. Um, 90 days prior to uh, written notice prior to delivery. Okay. You want to use a good contractor that you can count on. So if, if you're giving a tenant 90 days notice that you're going to deliver, and if you don't, you got damages, you better use a good contractor that's reliable that you've worked with before and that will perform. So in this, this particular instance, um, Biarta <coughs> uses AJ Palf. Okay. 
we use AJ Bell for two. Why do you think we did that? What happens if you get uh, two kids in the sandbox and there's one toy, or two dogs and there's one toy? They fight. Okay. Same with contractors. Uh, no, you don't want that. You want everybody to get along, everybody be happy, and just get the job done. Okay. I I, I can't tell you how many how many instances I've had with contractors where it's just it's they're like, well, you did this wrong, or you did that wrong. You, you feel like you're like a, a a referee. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's not fun. Um, tenant agrees to submit. CDs for landlord's approval and to the city of Carson within 90 days after lease execution. And why is that important? It's delivery is tied to their permits, right? You need them to submit as quickly as possible so they can get their permits because you need to get your rent. Well, we got a cam charges. Okay. It's a sorry, messed up there, but cam charges. Tenants shall self maintain, repair, and replace the common area. Okay. If a curb gets knocked out, they're responsible for it. If the asphalt, after think about it, they're signing a 34, close to a 35 year lease. Do you think that parking lot's going to need to be replaced? Absolutely. Do you think it's cheap to do that? No. Okay. Under this language, they got to re repair, maintain, and replace. So it's their obligation. Uh, they pay all real property taxes and applicable replacement cost insurance and earthquake insurance. Who do you think wants earthquake insurance? Think about income stream. Think about, besides me, who wants rent the most? Lender, right? Is if there's a casualty, they wanna make sure there's proceeds to rebuild and there's actually income coming in, okay? Um, and tenant shall pay its actual cost of utilities, separate meter, metering, um, you know, pre Please provide the electrical capacity, gas line size, and water line size, right? They have certain electrical requirements. Um, I got lucky on this because they could reuse the existing electrical. Okay? If you have to upgrade the electrical, expensive. Okay. All the supply chain issues that we're dealing with, switch gear. Okay. It's 12 to 18 months to get switch gear. Okay. That's that's a problem. HVAC, uh, we give them 250 grand for a ratio of one ton for every 350 square feet. They're responsible for it. Yeah, I'm not, HVAC breaks, it's their problem. Okay, delivery conditions, free of FF&E. Okay, what's FF&E? Furniture, fixtures, and equipment. Okay, free of hazmats. Okay, what are the hazmats? Hazardous materials, asbestos, lead-based paint. Okay, that's my obligation. All utilities in good working order. That sounds like an easy one, but not. Why? 1956 building. Think of plumbing lines in a 1956 building. Oh my God. Right? So, um, seismic. Okay. ADA requirements. What's ADA? American with Disabilities Act. So we got to make sure that all the common area has uh, connectivity with ADA uh, path pathways to the store. Um, and that's our obligation. And the landlord and tenant will work together to design an upgraded uh, exterior premises, which design shall be the landlord's uh, sole cost. That's sector group satisfactory. So the elevations that I showed before, that's what we agreed upon. Okay. And we got the city to approve those. City was happy. Critical dates, full set of plans, what we're to provide delivery date. Outside delivery day, okay. If we fail to deliver 
they have the right to terminate. Okay. There's typically two remedies. One, they have self-help. What's self-help? It's easy. You can help yourself. All right. They can they can basically do the work. They can charge us back, and they can get over. Okay. Or they can terminate. Non-disturbance agreement. What's a non-disturbance agreement? And I know these are a lot of new terms. So non-disturbance agreement means if I fail to pay my mortgage and the lender takes it back, the property, the lender becomes the landlord. They are obligated to recognize by Arta, by Arta's lease. They can't say, hey, we don't have a lease. We're going to do what, what we want. Why is that important to buy Arta? Is if they're investing $10 million into the space, they want to make sure they can operate a store, right? Signage, okay? With anchor tenants, I typically tell them maximum available by law, by law okay? If we have a sign criteria, they got to follow that, but it's got maximum available by law. Small tenants, different story. Big tenants, they drive the development, whatever they want. Lease form, tenants lease form, fine. Brokerage commissions, okay? We got to pay a brokerage fee. When should we pay a brokerage fee? When we sign the lease? No. Why? Because there's still contingencies, right? The deal could blow up. You don't want you don't want to pay. You got to have those contingencies satisfied in a way. Okay, this is important. Okay, <clears throat> assignment. So, I think you all have this. You should read this one like three times, okay? They've got the right to sublease sub -lease it or assign it to a grocery, 25,000 square feet, okay? A national retailer with 20, you know, 25 stores. I really don't like that because they can put big lots in here and that's 25 stores, okay? That doesn't do it for me. It's a grocery store, right? I don't want a grocery store. It's a 56,000 square foot store. Most of the grocers today are expanding are what? 25,000 square feet, sprouts, et cetera. So that, that is why. So if, 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 if they need our consent for assignment, go ahead. Um, with the solution is that well, sub subleasing is basically they sublease it to another entity and they make the spread. Now, here's what happens they're paying me whatever, $15. They're subleasing it for $30. They make that spread. Okay. A lot of times, what I try to do is say, we, we share 50-50 on it, any of that incremental sublease income. A lot of tenants will tell you, no, we're not doing that, right? Especially the credit tenants, right? Target, any of those tenants will tell you, you're crazy. You're not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not giving you anything. That's, that's part of our, our profit, right? Um, but if they want to assign it to like Irwin's grocery store, I can terminate. It's key, right? Is the, the reliability of that income stream is far different with Irwin's grocery store than with Viarda. Okay. Site plan acceptance, locations of the no build zone. Okay. In other words, I can't touch that part of the parking lot. Outside merchandise area, shop, shopping cart corrals, control system, trash enclosure, and signage. They've got the right for um, you know, six parking stalls for curbside pickup. Other so this is a big issue right now, right? Curbside pickup. All these retailers want the right to do curbside pickup. Well, certain CCNRs don't allow you to give them that, right? So you got to go to all the other tenants to get their consent. Okay. Electric vehicle charging stalls. Typically, if you need if you need four, you're eliminating five parking spaces. Okay. A lot of these retailers don't want you to eliminate any parking spaces. You have to get consent from them too. Um, but here's here, here's important. They they want to lock down the site. 
right? They want to basically say, we're going to negotiate this lease with you. We don't want you calling Walmart after we sign this letter with them. Think that's fair? I think it's fair so long as there's a cap on when the lease gets signed, okay? If the lease gets signed in 30 days, yeah, fine, okay? If it gets signed in, you know, I, I'm not giving them exclusivity for a year, no. I, I want them to sign that lease because there's other opportunities out there. Blackout dates, okay? What do you think blackout dates are? So what are we coming upon with Christmas trees and slats? When do you think that, when do you think a lot of sales happen? November, December. Like one Friday. Yeah. So grocery stores like November, like Thanksgiving, it's like, it's like payday, right? They're, 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 they don't want to accept possession during that date because they're, they need to focus on operating their stores. Okay. Additional provisions, written approval of prelim preliminary title report. Okay. Mutually acceptable lease agreement signed by both the landlord and the Okay. So as part of that, who do you think needs to approve this lease besides me? Who's giving us money? The lender. The lender. Okay, the lender has to consent to the lease. Okay, and the lender is going to look at issues like casualty, which is what happens if the building burns down. Okay, how do I get my rent? What's the net worth of the tenant? How long is the lease? They're going to look at all these things. Recapture rights. Is there rent abatement if Dollar Tree goes dark? No. Okay. Um, and obtaining. The necessary permits, licenses, zoning approvals, and authorizations uh, within 120 days after lease execution. This is a key point. Okay. They got 120 days to satisfy their permit. That's it. They either pay or play after that. What does that mean? They either say we're going forward or we're not. They might not, they might not have their permits. Okay. That permit period expires. Uh, approval of tenants audited financials within 10 days after LOI execution by the landlord and its lender of Bank of America. Key point, right? The only way I get I can get this deal done is the lender has to approve your financials. Okay. Uh, review of title, REAs, um, us providing uh, premises free of all hazmats. Subject to tenants' corporate approval on or before this date. Okay, why is that important? Because I, I don't want to negotiate a lease that's contingent upon a future approval by the tenant. They got to approve it, because otherwise, I'm giving up other deals with other tenants. Right? I could have a sprout deal here, and so they got to commit. They got to say, okay, we got corporate approval. Mm -hmm. We're ready to sign once. Okay. Covenant to operate. Um, if they fail to open, the landlord shall have for 180 days, excluding casualty or remodeling. The landlord shall have keyword, write this down, ongoing, ongoing right of recapture. They're dark. It's not a one-time right. I can recapture at any time. Okay. Because if they go dark, I got to go find a tenant. Right. And the only way I'm going to justify terminating their lease or getting consent from the lender to terminate their lease. So I got to have a backup tenant. OK. Um, at no cost to land. OK. That that is not what ended up happening at the end. I had to pay them their book value. OK. Because they have invest. They have an investment in the space. What's book value? It's basically the value of their improvements amortized over the lease term determined in, in accordance with GAAP, okay? Okay, here's the no build area. We talked about it. Everything else, I, I, I can do what I want on, on um, you know, 
the remainder of the shopping center. We've got the required stalls, the provided stalls, how many compacts, how many standard stalls there are, what the ratio is, 3.4 per thousand. Okay, typical retail is four per thousand. This is under parks. Okay, it's under park. It parks per code, but it's still a little light on park. Okay, not to bore you, you can read this. This this really has to do with the working set. Write this down. Read this five. Read the work exhibit five times, and have your construction manager read it five times. There's tons of traps. There's traps. Okay, why do you think there's traps? Because they want to hit you with liquidated damages. A lot of tenants, not all tenants, but a lot of tenants. Uh, like Ross. Okay, Ross dress for less. The delivery requirement is you got to hand them like a bucket of paint. Okay, that matches the whatever the, the walls. If you fail to do that, you're responsible for liquidated damages. Okay, you got to do a a uh, uh, basically a, a vapor survey on the concrete that they have to approve because if there's too much water in the concrete, the floor like buckles. Okay, like the not not the floor but like the floor aim like that whatever flooring they have, whether it's carbon, okay? So all these different different things. And uh, one of our activity partners is this um, pension fund advisor out of New York. And I was talking to him, like, what are you working on? It's a Ross deal. And I go, oh, great, that's fun. He goes, oh, yeah, it's, it's brutal. And he goes, you know what? I just priced the liquidated damages into the deal as part of the rent, because I know I'm going to pay it, okay? So be very careful on these on these delivery conditions. There's all sorts of, 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 of traps. And again, the plan approval process for the tenant, you gotta be very concerned about that because they they will never approve your plans. Bed, bath, and beyond, okay, where the trash compactor thing that I talked about, okay? They had a uh, language in there at least that basically said, uh, if they make a change, tenant directed change order, they're like, okay, I want that to be uh, brown instead of white. Okay. We'll pay the reasonable cost of saying, okay. Don't do that. It's brutal. Okay. Because you go, okay, my contractor said it was, I don't know, $2,000. You know what they say? We don't think that's reasonable. Okay. Then you're still obligated to deliver. Okay, so it's it's be very careful on these things. They there's a bunch of traps in here. So exclusives. So these are other tenant exclusives. We talk about the grocery exclusive, but Bank of America, right? That acknowledges that in the Albert stores at the center, tenant currently operates some sort of two automatic teller machines. Dollar Tree, okay. The landlord shall not lease, rent, or occupy, or permit, permit to be leased, rented, or occupy any portion of the shopping center for the operation of a single price point variety retail store. A lot of tenants, they start with their exclusive. They say, you can't do it in the shopping center or within a three mile ring of the shopping center. Okay. I work for a publicly traded REIT. Okay, I, I did. We were buying shopping centers all the time, like directly across the street from each other. If I agreed to that, big problem. Okay, can't do that. You only can control what you own. Okay, you only can control what you own. You should write that down too. Okay, a lot of times they say, "Well, I'll tell you what, if um, you don't own the Mervins, they go dark. Uh, we get." You know penalties. No, that's 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 a problem. Western Dental, Dollar Tree, Jamba Juice. They got to be operating. It can't be in default. Okay. This is a shopping center that we did in uh, Ranch Ranch. So we bought this from Wells Fargo Bank. It's an REO. What's that, REO? 
real estate owned. Okay. So basically they took it back. Okay. They took it back. We bought it from the lender. CVS was here in line, 25,000 square feet, doing big numbers. Okay. Wells Fargo, huge numbers. Okay. High income area of the desert, lots of deposits. You got a city parcel here. You got a Brandini toffee here. Pat here, Pat here. You got a drive through here. You got a drive through there. You got a vacant grocery store over there. Okay. You got shops. Okay. Anytime I look at a site, I look at how's the access, how's the visibility. Okay. All this stuff kills the back stuff. Okay. There's no line of sight. The access is, 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 is bad. It's just, it's tough. The other thing is you have a lot of shops here. Okay. Anytime you look at a shopping center, look at the income. What's generated by reliable and consistent income? That's anchor tenant income. What's generated by non reliable income? Shop space tenants. Okay. And I hate to sound so harsh, but it's tough on shop space tenants. I mean, a lot of the, a lot of these tenants, they're relying on home equity lines of credit to fund down months. But what happens when their interest rate cost goes from 4% to 8%? It's tough, okay? So, so think about this. So that, that's the center. And you got an old grocery store, so that's a good thing. You got loading docks, all right? That's a good thing. Right? Loading docks are key because tenants need to load. You've got a non-prototypical CVS, all right, which means non-prototype means it's not at the it's not the mouse trap that they want in terms of square footage. It doesn't maximize sales. This is the this is the dinosaur of their brand. Okay, it's twenty five. <laughs> so here's what we did. We moved CVS here. Put them freestanding with the drive through, took them down to 15,000 square feet. A drive through drives their sales 20%, roughly. Okay. So it's, it, it's when reduce occupancy costs, increase, increase that. We got that deal approved at Real Estate Committee with CBS in December. Why is that important? Think about publicly traded companies. Think about earnings. Think about store growth. Okay. They were short on stores in terms of store openings and commitments for new stores and getting prototype. We got that approved right a year in. It's great. Okay. This pad here, uh, we put Hobby Lobby in the back. Okay. So, what's the problem there? You got to move CVS first before you can build Lobby Lobby. Okay, so your construction is getting big. Okay, because CVS is not going dark. They're doing a midnight move. They're basically saying, hey, we'll move when it's ready. So we uh, essentially did the Hobby Lobby, did Steinmart and the other box. Uh, drive throughs are not permitted on 111. We have a drive through Starbucks there. How do we get that done? So I'd meet the councilman who was responsible for this asset at this site when we, during construction. And he'd show up with Starbucks coffee. I go, where'd you get that? He goes, oh, I went to Palm Desert to you know, get, the, get my Starbucks through the drive through I'm like, well, you need a drive through here. And he's like, no, we can't. This is the playground for the presidents. We don't have drive throughs in the playground for the presidents. I go, well, I think you need one. It's kind of unfortunate you're giving money away to your sister city. And he kept telling me no, kept telling me no, kept telling me no, kept telling me no. He finally said, you know what? We'll consider it. I got her proof. Okay. That was that was big. Starbucks does probably three million in sales here. I mean, just it's a bomber. All right. They do really, really well. So, anyways, I got that done, and he's like, don't talk to me about drive-thru's again, okay? And I'm like, 
oh god, a couple months go by. We've got this pad right here. It's supposed to be a you know a sit down restaurant. What's happening with sit down restaurants? Going the way of the dodo bird, right? They're dying. Okay. So, anyways, I'm like, I got this great idea. And he goes, What's your idea? And I go, I think In and Out would be perfect. And he goes, We can't do that. No, there's no way. We can't, we can't do that. I'm like, listen, it's 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 the best brand that you could possibly have in the playground for presidents, right? It's it's in and out. It's an it's a it's an American success story. Born in California, and by the way, they're a great brand. They're a great operator. They're community. They give you know things back to the community. So he didn't say no, and he didn't say yes. And I said, okay, well that means I got shot. So I went to In and Out, and I said, let's figure something out here. And they're like, oh, it's Highway 111. We can't get a drive-through permitted. And I'm like, well, just come to a meeting with me. And so we met at the city. And uh, in and out goes, okay, well, we're in, provided that we can buy it after the lease at a set number. And that number was, it was brutal, right? Because they're they're like, we got, you know, we got all the leverage. We, we want to be there. I said, oh, okay, well, that's fine. Because my view is retail is like building blocks. If you get Starbucks, you can get other tenants. Get in and out, you're going to get other tenants, right? Get a grocery store, you're going to get other tenants. So long story short, we had to do a full-blown environmental impact report. And uh, it was supposed to be like approved at planning commission. And then it got appealed by some neighbors. And in and out goes, they go, time out. We're not going to pay for the CIR. And I go, what's, what's the other thing I told you? Never give up, right? Never give up. When I, when I, what I basically said is, tell you what, I'll pay for the IR. And they go, you're going to pay for the IR? I go, yeah, I'll pay for the IR. But we're going to strike your right to buy. That's the quid pro quo. I'll, I'll take the risk on the EIR, okay? But you have no right to buy afterwards. And they said, okay. And I got it done, all right? So it was, it was, it was critical. So we get in and out done. Okay. In the meantime, Steinmark went bankrupt. Okay. And I'm like, okay, we got a we got a grocery store, Amazon Fresh. Ain't a deal with them. And I, I think I told you, but they they're ready to open. But they're not open. Okay. I've been working on this deal since 2014. It's been a long time. I think my hourly on this is probably dollar an hour but you know it's 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 part and parcel of of just you know working through stuff and if you look at the before site plan and you look at the after site plan right it took a lot of work to demo those pads put new new access point right here um you know we brought new we, we took a center that was an reo i mean this is the main and main intersection of four the city of Ranch and Lowe's. Okay, so just, just recapping some things. Repair the maintenance, limit landlord maintenance obligations as much as possible. Hence, build building, they should be responsible for all maintenance, including roof, structural, and company mandating repairs. Okay, a lot of tenants say, tell you what, we don't want to pay for any upgrades in the common area if it's required by the government. You go, well, wait a second. You're telling me if they change requirements for uh, ADA for handicap access, you don't want to pay for it? How's that fair? And we're like, well, okay, we'll pay for the ADA, right? But any governmentally mandated action, I'm not causing it. They should pay for it, okay? Um, any landlord repair and maintenance obligation reduces NOI and reduces the value of the asset. Underline, highlight, etc. No, you, you want to minimize all your obligations. Uh, opening covenant. They agreed to open as a fully stocked staffed target within 365 days. Allow for damages if they fail to open. That's very difficult, right? Have right to seek specific performance. Again, very difficult. I don't think a court is going to uh, require a tenant to open. 
increase ramp by 125% if they fail them. That's that's the typical remedy that we see. Recapture right best. They go dark. I can recapture it at no cost. Second best book value of leasehold improvements, amortize and reports. Yeah. Third best. Okay. Like Albertsons, they're like, well, we've got uh, their leases were 25 years with eight five year options, 65 years. They're like, we want the value of the lease. Okay. We so if our, our rent is under market, you need to pay us for that. Okay. Scary. Because that's that there, there's no incentive for you to buy them out. Right. So another another thing you can do is basically say, hey, tell you what, we'll split it like 50 50. We'll limit it to 10 years of leasehold value and we'll split it 50 50. Zone of control. Um, right to make changes outside of the zone control, right to have non-retail uses, understand various zones of control for various anchor, anchor tenants. What is this? This is my Picasso. Okay. What it is, it goes through, you can see on the right-hand side, Ralph, Savon, Bed Bath, Cost Plus, Shops, pad, okay. So the control area for routes is everything in purple. We had to have all the site work done, everything in purple, okay. For them to be obligated to open and pay rent. Okay, you see that uh, uh, there's a signal. It included the signal. So we did prior to buying the property, we did a traffic. Warrant signal analysis. That basically, you have a traffic engineer. Is there enough traffic to justify a signal? Okay. Came back, said, yes, there is. We're like, okay, we'll put it in a signal. And we had money budgeted to put it in a signal. So we go in to pull permits on the signal. Guess what happened? They said there's not enough traffic. You can't put it in that signal. So I'm like, uh-oh, because that's, that's a condition of Ralph's lease. Uh oh, right. But what I tell him, I said, "Hey, it's government mandated. I had no control over that. There's no, there's no way. I, you know, I, I cannot put those in." But this is how complicated it gets. What do you have to have done to get tenants to open? And again, this is a phased project. Ralph's was open first, then you had Bed Bath, then you had CVS, then you had Cost Plus. But all these things you need to know, right? And it's like it's a color chart. It, it, it really is. I was working with a guy at, uh, at Regent Group, and this project is super complicated. I'm like, we're going to get a site plan and we're going to draw the zones of control. And he goes, I'm not doing that. I go, what do you mean you're not doing that? He's like, well, have somebody else do that. I'm like, no, you're the project manager. You need to know exactly what you need to deliver in order to get those tenants open. Okay. Casualty. The tenant reimbursed for earthquake insurance. Okay. Does the tenant have termination rights in the amount of casualty? What do you think is happening with insurance right now? Through the roof. Okay. Think about fires. Think about earthquakes. Think about, uh, you know, tornadoes, hurricanes, you name it. Right. Anytime one of those events happen, insurance goes way up. Okay. Now, earthquake, tenants hate paying for earthquake because earthquake is like this. There's an earthquake yesterday. Guess what? Rates went up today. Okay. Got to think about that. Now, they say, we don't want to pay earthquake. We're like, tell you what, if our lender requires it, you're obligated to pay. And usually they say, like, blame everything on the lender. That's it's a good negotiating tactic. The lender, if the lender requires it, you need to pay for it. Okay, conditions to affect in this lease. Okay, you're going to have okay inspection period, physical due diligence. They need to uh, approve title, soils, environmental. Okay, that's out of the way. Then they approve zoning. Okay, what are conditions of approval? Then they approve building permits. Try to get them all waived. Okay, so don't say you got an inspection period for 365 days. And there's no milestones because guess what? You know what they're going to do? 
they're not going to do anything. Okay. And then you're going to, you're going to be in day 300 saying, I got to close this deal. And they still haven't waived their fiscal due diligence. You got to set milestones for them to uh, waive those conditions. Try not to give the building permit contingency if you if you have to obligate tenants to use commercially reasonable best efforts to obtain. If they fail to obtain, you should have a right to come in and see if you can get those permits. Now the reality is, I can't get a health permit. Okay, I can't get an alcohol permit because I'm not a user. Okay, but building permits, I can definitely move along. Assignment. Okay, release of liability. No. Okay, you know what this is? This is, we can assign it to Irwin's grocery store and we're no longer responsible. No. That's not the deal. Okay? We had a Pace department store. Anybody remember Pace? It was owned by, well, uh, no, it was owned by Kmart. Okay? What's the credit of Kmart? Horrible. Right? Who bought them? Walmart. Okay? Think of your credit quality just by that event. That assignment to Walmart, all of a sudden the value of your property went way up. Okay? The quality of your income stream went way up. Okay? Don't release for liability. They're going to say, oh, if we got $100 million, we can release this. No. You're not releasing me. Man. I'm responsible to the extent of the property, but you know, no, you, I need that credit for you. Do you have to pay for nationally or just in California? Nationally. Yeah. So it's, it, it's, 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 you know, it's so funny. It's just like my, my business. I see those are everywhere. Yeah. They're, 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 they're I, my, my partner just sent me an email today that Sears is reopening a store somewhere. In Mexico, they're they're established. Yeah, I spent a lot of time in Mexico. It's Kmart, Sears, and Woolworths. Woolworths, yeah. Woolworths. Oh yeah. Very popular. Yeah, it's 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 you know my business is constantly recycling. Okay, and people look at like oh my god like you know my my wife will come up and she goes oh my god your Friday is going bankrupt. Isn't that terrible? I'm like I think it's great. She goes well why? I go because there's more product that I can build. And I can put new tenants in at higher rents. Okay. So it drives opportunity. It drives opportunity. Yeah, Toys R Us. Yeah. Our Woodland Hills site. So we bought we bought uh Woodland Hills, Toys R Us. Okay. Um uh Burbank, Toys R Us. Everybody's like, why are you buying like terrible tenants? I'm like, I like terrible tenants in grade A locations at low rents. The, the 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 lease that was signed in Woodland Hills, 1978, the lease was signed. I was 11 years old, okay? 11 when that lease was signed. Guess what? You know what that rent was? It was super cheap. That's why we bought it. You buy them, you get the current rent, the tenant lease. Exactly. So we're, we're, we're buying on under market rents, okay? So, Eric, buy it in a package or like a bulk. So, we'll buy the whole center. So, we've got in that one, we got Toys R Us, we got Office Depot, we got Citibank. And, and so, the whole goal is, is analyzing that rent roll. And I always brought a rent roll because rent rolls, you got to look at them. What's the rent compared to market? How undervalued? What's the cost per square foot you're buying this asset? Right, higher rent, higher cost per square foot. Lower rent, lower lower rent per square foot. So, anybody know where Pacific Towers is in El Segundo? So, so those two towers, El Segundo Boulevard and Sepulveda. Okay, so those towers are going. They're selling that for one hundred and fifty dollars a foot. Okay. You know what replacement cost to rebuild that building is? $850. Okay. So all the other office owners in the area are like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. Because somebody's going to go in there, they're going to be able to cut the rent so cheap that it's going to affect the entire area. 
scary. Ask for parent to guarantee. Co-tenancy, don't do co-tenancy, it's on here. Has to be operating and not default. Limit period of 12 months. After that, they either got to pay full rent or terminate the lease. Require that they continue to pay triple minutes during co-tenancy. But don't have an ongoing, remember I said about that Ross deal where they, for like 15 years, they paid co-tenancy rent? No. After 12 months, they, they either terminate the lease, you got to get them to the table. They either terminate the lease or pay full rent. Exclusives, obligated to recognize future exclusives, limit exclusive primary use, add incidental sales carve outs, exclusive termination tenants does not operate for 12 months. Increases, get increases, as high as you possibly can. But you know, you want your tenants to do well, right? You want them to make money. Pad delivery. You know what a pad delivery is? If I'm doing a ground lease, I got to deliver a pad, compacted, certified with utilities. Okay. Sheet of entitlements, they got to accept or reject it within five days. Okay. We we delivered a pad to Ralph's. The day after we delivered, it rained. Okay. Which meant we had to go back in, recompact, more money, et cetera. Covenant to build. They start work, they got to finish work. Child delivery, um, accepting possession. Okay. When you're delivering space, make sure they sign something that says they have accepted possession. Okay. They don't figure out why. Okay. Because they're probably going to hit you with LDs if they don't get that. Stick with any damages. Understand delivery conditions. A lot, of, a lot of leases say certificate of occupancy. Well, if you got a, a shopping center and you're staging, you can't get a permanent certificate of occupancy. You can get a temporary certificate of occupancy. So if they get a TCO or equivalent, they're all good. Tenant approved vendors, uh, getting tenants to approve uh, CDs. This is some option language. So this basically says, hey, uh, this is actually really good language. Okay. They can't be in default. Their sales are above, are growing. Okay, Otherwise, they can't exercise. They're the original tenant on the lease. They can't assign the options. Okay, um, Landlord and tenant are able to reach agreement on a remodel of the premises. So you can force the tenant to remodel to, in order to uh, give them an option. It's fair market rent. Base rent plus percent. This is the greater of. Okay, so you're trying to get the most rent that you possibly can. Okay. Well, I'm done. Um, what's the major driver of value in a property? <laughs> Why is an open and covenant important? And why do you need to recapture it? If you have any further questions, just let me know. I've got my card on the table and feel free to reach out if you have specific questions.